Hi and welcome to Vintage Doll Collector. I really enjoyed putting together a little display of dolls for Halloween, so thought I would do the same for Thanksgiving. I have a few Pilgrim dolls and a few Native American dolls to show you. Here's Pilgrim Barbie from the American Stories collection, dated 1994. I haven't decided whether to take her out of the box or keep her in it, so for now she's still in the box. She has the superstar face mold. Her dress is dark red and made of velveteen. The bodice with the bows and ruffles is too fancy, but Mattel probably felt they had to jazz it up a little to make it more attractive. I should point out that it's not just Barbie. Actually, none of my Thanksgiving dolls are wearing historically accurate costumes. The Pilgrims actually probably wore wool most of the time, although they may have had linen clothing as well. They didn't have access to cotton in those days. This wooden doll is eight and a half inches tall. She's made of a wooden spindle, and her lower arms are wood as well. Her upper arms are either wired or possibly made of pipe cleaners because they're poseable. She has a hand-painted face. Her outfit is made of synthetic felt with a lace collar and ribbon bows. Her little bag is made of velveteen, and on her back she carries a bundle of twigs. She has her original wrist tag. Inside it says, Silhouette Spindle Collectibles are all handmade at Silhouette Farm, located in the New England coastal town of Westport, Massachusetts. And she's signed by the artist on the back, M. Michaud, 1990. I've seen a few other dolls by this artist on eBay, and the listing said they were purchased at Sturbridge Village, which is a living history museum in Sturbridge, Mass. Here's a Ginny Pilgrim doll from the 1960s. She was made toward the end of the original Vogue era, before the company was sold and production was moved overseas. She's all vinyl, with rooted dark blonde hair and sleep eyes. She's dressed in a very simple, basic pilgrim style. Her dress is dark blue cotton with a white cotton shawl and apron. Her petticoat underneath has synthetic eyelet trim, and she's also got nylon panties, cotton knit tights, and black vinyl shoes. This pilgrim lady is all cloth with a molded mask face. I believe she was made in the 1930s or 40s. She's got beautiful hand-painted features and a mohair wig. Her dress is made of gray sateen with a long matching cape. The collar and cuffs, cap and apron are organdy. She has a narrow ribbon tag sewn in the back of the dress which says Priscilla Mullins 1620. Priscilla Mullins is believed to have been 18 years old when she came over on the Mayflower in that year with her parents and brother. The following year, she married John Alden. The doll also came with this piece of paper rolled up and stuck in the back of the apron. It lists the names of the signers of the Mayflower Compact, November 11, 1620, with William Mullins, Priscilla's father, and John Alden's names in bold print. Underneath her dress, Priscilla wears a muslin petticoat and pants, brown stockings, which feel like they're made of rayon, and black oilcloth shoes, missing one buckle. Unfortunately, I don't have any Pilgrim Man dolls, but I hope to remedy that before next Thanksgiving. Now for the Native American dolls. This is the Plains Indian doll, which was made by Collectible Concepts to coincide with the U.S. Postal Service issue of the Classic American Dolls postage stamps in 1997. This is what the antique doll on the stamp looked like. The reproduction doll, if you can call it that, doesn't look anything like the antique one. She's 13 inches tall, made of synthetic fabric with acrylic yarn braids, but has a lot of really nice beading. Here's the back. This 18 and a half inch cloth doll is Hiawatha, made from a Bucilla stuffed toys kit, probably from the 1930s or 40s. He has embroidered features and wool yarn hair. He's made of cotton, tinted at his head and arms and the whites of his eyes. His cotton clothing is tinted with the border design on his tunic and moccasins accented with embroidery floss and wool yarn stitches and fringe. The doll is probably not meant to represent the real historical Hiawatha, who was instrumental in the formation of the Iroquois Confederacy hundreds of years ago, but more likely represents the fictional Hiawatha from the Henry Wadsworth Longfellow poem, which tells the romantic adventures of an Ojibwe warrior from the southern shore of Lake Superior. 
The poem has been printed in many different editions and inspired a movie as well. This action figure is Tonto, made by Gabriel to go along with the Lone Ranger figure, and dated 1973. He's all vinyl, with molded hair and the usual action figure joints. He's nine and three quarter inches tall and wears his original outfit. I've looked for a Squanto doll, but have not been able to find one. Squanto, whose real name was Tisquantum, was the last surviving member of the Patuxet tribe, who saved the pilgrims at Plymouth from starvation by giving them food and teaching them about growing corn and other Native American crops. If I can't find a Squanto doll, I'm thinking of maybe redressing Tonto to more accurately reflect the clothing that Squanto might have worn. Here's my favorite Native American doll, and the only one who represents a member of a tribe from New England. Not sure why her tag says Jamestown Settlement on it, though. She's Weedamu, and like one of my pilgrim ladies, was also made by Mary Michaud of Silhouette Doll Company. She's made of wood with a hand-painted face and is 11 and a half inches tall. Her costume is suede cloth and is decorated with faux fur, wooden beads, real feathers, and shells. She has a wooden mortar and pestle for grinding corn. She signed on the bottom of the base and dated 2006. The real Weedamoo was Sachem of the Pocasset tribe, as her father had been before her. She was born about 1635 in what is now Rhode Island. Weedamoo had five husbands, one of whom was the eldest son of Massasoit, who participated in the first Thanksgiving with the pilgrims. Weedamoo's adolescent life was made into a children's historical novel in the Royal Diaries series entitled Weedamoo, Heart of the Pocasset. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. This year, in addition to my other blessings, I'm also thankful for all my YouTube viewers who have watched and subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching and see you next time.